Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining our Improving Developer Productivity and Security with Cloud-Based Development uh, Environments. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I'm Marcus, Product Manager within Google Cloud Developer Experience Organization, specifically focused on cloud workstations, and I'm joined today by Christian. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Christian Gorka. I'm from Commerzbank from Germany, and I'm heading the Cyber Center of Excellence team in Commerzbank. I'm, I'm proud to join the session from Marcus. Mm -hmm. All right, so agenda for today, right? So we start by giving folks a high-level overview of what is Cloud Workstations, what problem it solves. Then we move on to doing a product deep dive, talk a bit about the features, both existing and new features introduced. And finally, Chris will be talking a bit more about the Commerce Bank story and journey when adopting workstations at scale, right? So let's start. Okay, so Cloud Workstations overview, right? So the key idea here is, uh, Let's first start by recapping uh, all the tools Google Cloud has currently available for uh, developers, right? So you can see here a list uh, of those tools. Essentially, the first of them was uh, Cloud Shell. So Cloud Shell essentially provides you with a pre-configured development environment available from a terminal. The idea here is a development environment which is focused on simplifying onboarding and evaluation. Let's say you want to run a gcloud command or to quickly set up a GK cluster. The idea here is you just go to a browser, either on the cloud console or the standalone uh, cloud shell, and within a few seconds, you're up and running uh, and getting some basic prototypes uh, working. Next, uh, we also have cloud code. The idea here are ID extensions you can install on your uh, preferred ID, be it uh, Visual Studio Code, be it IntelliJ, PyCharm. The idea here is helping you while you're developing against Google Cloud. Let's say, imagine, Kubernetes development on GKE, Cloud Run development, and so on and so forth, right? So let's, uh, three years ago, we announced a major update to uh, Cloud Shell Editor, essentially introducing capabilities such as debugging, and troubleshooting, and versioning. The idea here was also make it easier for tasks which are developer specific, such as I wanna try an API in Google Cloud, or I wanna quickly get a basic uh, web server up and running from a configured uh, environment. This year at uh, Google I.O., early this year announced the GA of Cloud Workstations, which will be essentially be covering in depth uh, today. You can see essentially workstations being the dev environment which goes beyond uh, onboarding. That's the environment which, which is tailored for day-to-day -day development. Imagine you've been able to customize a environment with the libraries and the tools you need for your day-to-day -day, uh, development. And finally, also today, you folks saw about some of the new expansions we had on the private preview on the Duet side. The key idea of Duet is uh, bringing developer assistance directly on your ID. The two focus here is, one, enabling productivity. So for example, as a developer, you can do more with less. Less time, less context switching, less efforts, and also enablement and empowerment. Let's say as a developer, you can now do things which would be otherwise a bit uh, out of reach or potentially beyond your, uh, either because they're too time consuming or a bit above your technical uh, uh, punch rate, essentially by helping you with a companion AI available either via a chatbot or via a chat, uh, either via chatbot or via contextual code uh, generation, right? So with that overview, let me then dive deeper into Cloud Workstations uh, itself, right? So you can see here a screenshot of what it looks like. The key idea of Workstations is essentially providing a, a non-demand development environment available from uh, any machine you want to use here, right? So the key idea here is uh, it's a fully customizable development environment. The idea is, yes, you get a code editor, like we're seeing here, but also you get all the layers of the stack you need for your day-to-day -day development, such as you can specify ID extensions, the libraries, the compute, the storage, GPU accelerators, uh, network connectivity, essentially everything for you to have this fully packaged, ready to go uh, developer uh, experience, right? So that's one thing. Another key focus here is consistency among developer development environments. The idea here is with workstations, you can define a golden workstation configuration, which is consistent across your uh, developers. Let's say if you are a team working on Java with a JDK in Spring, you can have all these tools pre-installed and ready for them to use uh, from workstations, right? And the final one here is uh, all of this is built with security in mind. The idea here is, uh, as you folks see here, uh, also do that while you have a series of compliance, security, and data exfiltration mechanisms built in so that you can have an improved developer experience 
without uh, sacrificing your uh, security in the process. So just a quick thing here is you saw now what workstations is. Let me talk quickly about the three key problems we heard from uh, many customers like Commerce Bank and others that we believe workstations is well suited uh, to address, right? So the first one is dev environment setup, right? That's one thing which we hear time and time again that it may take days, weeks, in some extreme cases, even months for a developer to be able to get you, hey, I can read, write code, and submit pull requests. And a good chunk of this time we just spent doing development environment setup, installing the right dependencies, so on and so forth. That's one task which workstations was suited to address by having these consistent environments. The second one here is uh, security and exfiltration prevention. Right, so the moment you have uh, your code and data living on a local machine, you're by design increasing your potential uh, attack surface. The idea here is if you move this code and data to a work to an environment which is cloud-based, you not only you minimize your attack surface, but also you open up the possibility of using some of the security controls that we talk later, such as VPCSE, Beyond Corp Enterprise, and so on and so forth. Right? And finally, but not least, uh, developer productivity. The key idea here is uh, something we saw, for example, was challenges with accessing a resource on a, uh, on a private network. All of those are essentially the kind of things which typically it's hard, kind of hard to find a balance between velocity and security. That's where workstations find the sweet spot where you can have pre-configured environments while following the organization and security policies as well as more flexible compute and uh, the benefits of networking at higher, higher velocity network access for handling uh, artifacts, right? So with that said, that was the high level review of workstations. Let me now do a per feature deep dive for a uh, focus on each of these three uh, problem spaces I mentioned uh, before, right? So the first one here is development environments, uh, fast onboarding with development environments ready to go here, right? So folks can see here a video essentially showing the creation of a cloud workstations. The idea here is within a few minutes, you can get the development environment up and running. And the idea here, as you can see here, is as a developer, I have a choice of configurations. Those configurations can be created by a central uh, platform team and updated. The idea here is a pick one configuration. Once I click on start, you see here that within a few seconds, I get the workstation up and running. And what happened here behind the scenes is created a VM we attached an image with the customization uh, the developer needs, plus we mounted the persistent disk. And this process essentially happens faster because we have the keep support for a pool of form VMs to essentially allow this 30 second to uh, writing code experience here. Inside, as I mentioned before, you can see in that case, we are showing a VS Code in the browser. You can see our extension potentially having a series of code samples. In that case, you can see a bunch of Java code, but it could as well be, for example, your private microservices or some internal code you have here. And it also comes with extensions and tools pre-installed, right? So if you here open a basic uh, Java file, you see you got LinkedIn, you get all the Java extensions capabilities uh, pre-installed. Plus, it comes with the right version of the JDK pre-installed and all the Java libraries uh, needed here, right? So the idea here is having this set up pre-baked and defined in a central manner by uh, platform teams, right? That's it. Next one is GPU acceleration, right? So uh, one thing which I'm excited to mention now is we have GPU acceleration support within cloud workstations, covering essentially A100s, T4s, uh, H100s, all the most popular uh, GPUs available on GCP. And this essentially allows your developers, even either if they're working on VS Code, PyCharm, JupyterLab, or RStudio, to be able to benefit from GPU accelerations for uh, machine learning tasks or data science specific uh, tasks, right? Without having to worry about setting up GPUs or worrying about CUDA driver uh, setup for being productive. Next one is region support, right? So we are very excited to hear about the global interest we'll be getting on cloud workstations. Our team is working very hard at adding and extending our region support. We're excited to say now we're up at 20 regions supported across five different, uh, four, sorry, four different continents with uh, uh, Italy, Israel, and Australia being in regions which we just added over the last uh, months and many more uh, to come as well. All right, now shifting gears to productivity, right? So let's talk about the capabilities available for improving uh, developer productivity. 
During the keynote uh, this morning, you folks heard about Duet in uh, Google Cloud. And you folks can know that Duet comes pre-installed on all cloud workstations. Essentially, what you can do here is once you sign up to Duet on that link and have here, you can essentially enable Duet for development teams. What you see is essentially something similar to what you're seeing here on the screen. Essentially, once you enable Duet, you'll be able to get uh, code completions, code generations, as well as a contextual chat assistance, which is very helpful for tests such as code explainability or test generation, or for example, troubleshooting of uh, code. It's a very interesting side-by-side -side companion. The chatbot as well is aware of all the files you have open within your ID. So the idea here is you can say, hey, explain me my code, or explain me what these three functions do. You don't have to worry about having to match exactly the signature of the functions you have within uh, your code. And you also have this feature, smart actions. Essentially, whenever you select code within uh, a cloud workstations, when you have Duet enabled, you see the option of contextual actions, such as generating code, in case you're selecting a comment string or a doc string, or uh, explaining code, or generating unit tests, or generating doc strings, right? So, and again, if folks want to try it out, you can go to cloud.google.com slash duetai to join our preview. For next slide, I'll talk a bit about RStudio and Posit Workbench. Right, so you heard from many uh, R and Python developers and data scientists that they really like using the end-to-end -end experience which Posit Workbench provides to them. Essentially integrating code editor and all the elements of the DevOps uh, of the software development lifecycle uh, they need. So I'm excited to announce our partnership with uh, Posit Workbench. Uh, now in GA, in Cloud Stations, essentially providing managed support for Posit Workbench with RStudio, including support for, for bringing your own license. The idea here is you can now use your own licenses for using Posit in addition to the other tools and IDs available within Cloud Stations in a managed uh, setting. And I then welcome Posit to our family of uh, IDs supported in Cloud Stations. And Workstations was built with a core principle in mind, which is be meeting developers whatever they are, right? So we know developers have a myriad of uh, tools that were selected over time to optimize for the productivity. Our idea here is to allow developers to experience the benefit of remote development and cloud-based dev environments without requiring changes to their workflows. So you can see here, this slide essentially showing many of the IDEs support, such as uh, VS Code, IntelliJ, Goland, or Studio with many more uh, on the pipeline uh, on our side, right? Finally, beyond IDEs, Workstation also supports some additional interfaces which come in handy on the development uh, lifecycle. For example, as you can see here, you can use uh, IntelliJ, uh, can access a Workstation via a local IntelliJ via JetBrains Gateway. You can, for example, if you prefer using local VS Code, you can use your local VS Code and use remote SSH, being able to access workstation via a secure SSH tunnel, which is enforced with uh, GCP IEM uh, policies. So the idea here is you can have the best of both worlds, essentially the local development experience while being able to benefit from a remote machine and the security and a compute power it could provide uh, you. And you can even uh, set up SSH or even TCP tunnels from the workstation to local machine. And you can see how this could be handy for more complex uh, troubleshooting uh, web server kind of, uh, either troubleshooting or development web server kind of setups, right? Now shifting gears, I wanna talk a bit about security and uh, data exfiltration mechanisms, data exfiltration prevention mechanisms, right? So first I wanna talk a bit about uh, our integration with Beyond Corp Enterprise, right? That's something which we announced at Google I.O. earlier this year, and we continue to work on extending this further. The idea here is bringing zero trust security mechanisms directly to your uh, development environments, right? So there are two specific features I wanna highlight here. The first one is data loss protection. You can actually see that on the recording here. The idea here is you can essentially enforce policies to prevent, uh, to mitigate uh, data loss directly on your clients, such as limiting copy and paste of uh, text or uh, download of files, either blanket policies or policies matching specific uh, uh, string patterns. So you can say, hey, you can block uh, access to only to sensitive pieces of code but allow access to other pieces of code. That's one. And two is context-aware access. 
Right, so Cloud Workstations also supports the ability for you to set up access policies, which are taking into account uh, uh, context-aware uh, factors, such as your IP location, whether your device is secured or has specific software installed, or depending on your geolocation of devices. The idea here is providing additional layers of security you can pick and choose to add to meet your uh, security postures, right? Next thing, shared VPC support, right? So one thing I wanna highlight here, which is a very important point of workstations is a workstation is essentially a managed service which provides uh, environments, essentially VMs running containers inside a VPC. Workstations using VMs is an important point. We don't use containers or uh, pods as a security boundary because they're known to have potential uh, exploitation of The idea here is having each developer having uh, a separate environment mitigates potential risk of uh, lateral uh, contamination of those environments in the case of an exfiltration. Plus, all workstations run inside of your, uh, you can choose to run those inside of your VPC, which allows you to then bring the typical security mechanisms used for your workloads, for your production workloads, such as VPC service controls, or uh, we can potentially, let's say, create uh, disk backup policies. Let's say you want to have a weekly pipeline to back up the data on your disks for sake of, say, potentially uh, uh, auditing uh, purposes. And uh, that's it for this one. And finally, one here is for platform admins, we've been expanding the amount of services workstations uh, can be, the, the amount of services you can use for managing your cloud workstations, right? So the key idea here is, yes, we have the typical Cloud Console, NG Cloud services, but increasingly we're hearing about customers wanting to use, let's say, Terraform or KCC, other services for orchestrating the workstations. The idea here is you can now use Terraform, as the folks can see here, or APIs for orchestrating the workstations, essentially using the same uh, recipes and plumbing you have for your other production uh, resources. Since you can treat your dev environments the same way you treat your production uh, environments, right? Folks, that's it uh, at a high level. Now I'll hand over for, to Christian to talk a bit more about their journey on cloud workstations. Yeah. Great, thank you very much, Marcos. I guess this was very interesting until here, and um, I will hope, I hopefully can, can continue. And I will talk a little bit about uh, Comets Bank and how we are going to leverage uh, cloud workstations and what we are also doing as of today with cloud workstations. So first of all, um, I want to introduce you a little bit to Comets Bank because you maybe don't, don't, don't know what we are doing. So Comets Bank um, has uh, around 26,000 uh, corporate client customers and just under 11 million private and um, small business customers in Germany. And uh, Comets Bank is the leading bank for the German Mittelstand. So this means we have a portfolio of customers um, for corporate, corporate clients and for the private and small medium uh, businesses. Um, furthermore, we have a focus on five uh, business models. So uh, our business model is, is, is structured into five elements. One is the personal advisory offering, so meaning for us, um, the customer is always in the focus and so we want to be the best partner for our customer. Next is a consistent customer focus, so the changes, uh, the demand of the customer and the, the wishes of the customer changes, so we need to adapt. Next is, of course, comprehensive digitalization, so this is one part of why, why, we, why I am here today, is because um, we are offering more and more services um, on a digital level, and um, same goes for our portfolio, which we bring to, to a, a digital world. Next, uh, profitability, profitability before growth, so this means that we need to focus on the, on the customer, and for us, again, the focus is customer and customer only. And last but not least, sustainability, which is an important topic for us, um, not only for providing sustainable solutions, but also helping our customers to transition in sustainable strategies. So the next, we have Comets Bank, and within Comets Bank, there are many different divisions. One of this division is Big Data and Advanced Analytics. Um, this is the division I'm, I'm working in, and I just want to give you a brief glance at what, what we are doing, how we could characterize us. So we are roughly 500 people uh, spread across four countries, and uh, we love being pioneers. So within Comets Bank, we have been uh, the first area in, in public cloud, 
and um, we value partnerships. So meaning within the cloud, we have got very good feedback from other key areas, from other divisions, telling us, hey, what you're doing is good, and actually we, we like to partner with you. And what's actually quite interesting, and what I want to highlight today is this one point, is we also drive innovation. And what we are doing since we started working on, on public cloud and what we are doing until today is um, actually we're working closely together with Google and we are also influencing the Google Cloud source code. So we have contributed some lines to the, to the source code of, of Google Cloud. So when you're using something with security or with containers, there's a likelihood that you're using actually some code which came originally, originally from, from Coins Bank. So and of course, um, we have a pride diverse um, 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 membership of, of employees and uh, we, we also drive with, with developing new, new talents. And last but not least, we aim for a dynamic mindset to grow furthermore. And uh, to give you some examples from a business point of view, what we are doing, so BAA creates value from data. This means we are gathering data from, from all of Comets Bank. Um, we may be making it accessible to other teams in Comets Bank and possibly also outside of, of Comets Bank. And we offer several services to it. So meaning how to consume data and how to get insights out of the data and how to work with the data. So we are also um, providing tools for our customers in the bank and outside the bank to uh, process the data. And last but not least, what's maybe the, the most difficult part here, what will also then connect to Cloud Workstation is the innovation part together with the regulatory part. Um, because while we can do all this great stuff, we also need to, to make sure that we adhere to the regulations which apply to us. And so um, to give you two examples of the use case, business use case we are doing in, in um, BDA is first electronic self-disclosure. So this is like applying AI and machine learning to, um, to transaction data to classify them. And the second example is something we call press for today. So we are scanning the news everyone can see and, and, and uh, apply the knowledge we gain from this news to reach out to our uh, customers and connect these customers with the relationship of the bank. And now we're coming slowly back to, to cloud workstations. Um, finally, this is my team, CyberCenter of Excellence. So we are doing three things. First is data protection, so making sure that the, we have the legal foundation to process data. Second is information security, so all of confidentiality, integrity, availability of data and processes. And third, last but not least, cloud, mainly public cloud. And within cloud, Again, there are three things we are doing. First is we are taking care of use cases, bringing use cases to the cloud. So the two examples I, I just mentioned, like Press for Today or Electronic Self-Disclosure, we help this use case migrate to the cloud. And during this journey on the cloud, we also develop something, something what we call the cloud enterprise suite, because the cloud, we don't only want to have secure, we also want to have it trustworthy. And this means whenever we bring a use case to the cloud, we make sure that problems we solve once we only solve really once and then have products ready for next use cases to come. And this is just the, the suit, suit that, we, that we build. And on this journey, of course, we also have to make sure we, we take the culture with us, the people with us. So we also have something which we call the E equals MC squared program, which means we, we want to get the excitement into our colleagues, making sure that we multiply our knowledge, we spark curiosity, and of course, drive the, the culture forward. And now the next question is, okay, now we have learned a little bit about Comets Bank, about big data and advanced analytics, about the cyber center of excellence, but why should we choose cloud workstations? Well, we had one simple situation we found ourselves in. This was um, our developers and analysts um, came to us and said, hey, we need an easy solution to create solutions on the cloud. Next, we have local IDEs, yes, but they are not made for, you know, rich uh, targets and endpoints in the cloud. And the last situation that we faced was um, developers need actually take care of their local machines, install software, install packages. And from these situations, we derived three challenges. The first key challenge is how can we provide an IDE that, is, that has access to cloud and on-prem CICD at the same time? Next, how can we make sure that we provide all the software that is required for developers to actually develop new software or to, to do data analytics? And how can we avoid the, the issue, it works on my machine, but not on another else computer? And last but not least, what also Marcos touched was how can we decrease the setup time from maybe weeks or months down to maybe below a minute? And so the solution was actually cloud workstations. 
and cloud workstations allows us to set up, as you have seen in the, in the video from Marcos, set up an environment for a developer who joins us today at the same day, at the same hour, in the same minute. And thanks to that, um, goes to, it goes a little bit, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, prepared work that we did. What was that we connected cloud workstations to our on-prem CICD environment, making sure that we install everything that is required from our point of view that is legally allowed, and uh, on the end, which works perfectly in the cloud. Um, and next, we do not only look at the developers and analysts, but we also have to look at the administrators who make sure that what the developers are using is actually A, compliant, and B, can be managed in a central place. And this is also something which was enabled by cloud workstations. And something which is often overlooked, but what I want to highlight here is also um, the cost model. The cost is very transparent and it's pay as you go. The moment the developer shuts down its own computer, his own computer, her own computer in front of him or her, um, the cloud workstation will also um, be shut down some minutes after. And um, you can see this in the, in the costs, you can see this in, in the management, and this is just a nice and handy feature to make sure we know what we have to pay for. And um, as Marcus also highlighted, there are three things I also want to deep dive into. One is security. How can we make cloud workstations secure? Second is customization. We have talked about security, but how can we marry this with customization? And last but not least, integration. How can we integrate cloud workstations into Commerce Bank's CICD world? So let me first start with security. So especially within financial institutes, you have a lot of regulations to follow. You have in-house regulations, you have regulations in Germany, which are quite restricted. You have regulations in Europe, like the, the GDPR. Uh, I guess there's something similar here in, in California with the CCSA. And of course, you have global regulations. And Comets Bank, acting as a global institute, financial institute, we have to adhere to all of these regulations at the same time. So this means we need to make sure, A, we have control over our network. This is where the VPC service, uh, where the VPC uh, feature of cloud workstations come in handy. We need to make sure that the data only flows where we want to control it, or where we want to flow it. Next, which is very important for us, is customer managed encryption keys. So whatever we put on these cloud workstations, we need to make sure it is encrypted our, under, under our key. It is great that Marcos is encrypting everything by, by default, but we want to keep it secure under Comets Bank's key. Next, we want to apply VPC service control. So when we use cloud workstations with other services on Google Cloud, like let's say Cloud Build, we want to make sure that the data only flows to that certain specific cloud build and not to any cloud build, maybe in a private project. Next is geo-recognization. So when we de develop code, when we develop new environments, we need to make sure that this stays there where the regulator wants to stay it. That's mostly Europe, that's maybe Germany, that's maybe the Netherlands. Next, we want to make sure that every application we use in the bank has some certain industry security certifications. So like ISO 27001 or BSIC5, you name it. And um, this is uh, also fulfilled by cloud workstations. And the list goes on. We have service level agreements where we have a certain uh, amount of uptime. We have asset inventory where we can see how many cloud workstations we have, who is using which cloud workstation, how long. We have logging, of course. We have monitoring of the cloud workstations. We have identity control. We have the managed IDE, where you have seen the plethora of different IDEs that you can have, like RStudio uh, or Visual Studio Code. And all of this together is actually what, what makes cloud workstations a good security fit for us. Because actually, if you look at this, this list, it looks like really a really, really long list. But I can assure you that we need to check every of these boxes before we can run cloud workstations or any other service. And um, we work together closely with, with Marcos to make sure before we run the first productive workload on, on the cloud workstations that the checkbox is made. Then now we have talked about security. And next is, okay, now we, are, we have a quite secure boundary, but how can we customize it such that we can actually serve our developers? And the first thing that we, that we did is uh, we looked, hey, how, what, what is actually needed? We asked our developers, what do you want? And this was the first experience to our developers. Usually they get served what they want um, because this is just how things have been. And now we, start, we thought, okay, if we start new, then maybe here's this new tool, Cloud Workstation. How can we make sure the developers feel home and get the tools that they need? And so we, we want to make sure that we have packages ready for them. We want to have the IDE they want to work in with. We want to make sure it's a programming language they need to work, to work with. Same goes for packages, containers, 
And then we also have certain, uh, let's say, groups of people working with it. Some need GPUs, like those are which are closer to, to processing data. Then others which need a lot of CPU and, and, RAM, and, and, and RAM, which, which need to, to store a lot of data. And so we, we came up with personas. And actually, we have, we have templated this into four different categories. And you see it on the, on the right-hand side of the screen. So we take cloud workstations. We have a set of administrators making sure that we only have a certain set of templates. And then people can select out of a certain set of templates which configuration they need. So we have actually two groups. We have developers and data scientists with two completely different usage profiles. The developer wants to, 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 to write code, maybe wants to use test data. And this is something which what we call the test box, part of, of, of our enterprise suite I, I mentioned earlier. And, the, and there's just one button they click. They say, hey, I want to have a test box. They click on it. And guess what? Two minutes later, or maybe even one minute later, they have everything ready. They have their own project. They have their own cloud workstation. They have their own BigQuery and all of their, their, their home felt um, environment in order to start with. Same with the data scientist. Data scientist doesn't want to work with, with test data because they want to build machine learning models, which works usually bad with, with synthesized data or at least with, with test data. So they need access to productive data. So this is a different uh, workflow and a different tooling they need, but there's no problem to it because we can customize cloud workstations in the security framework to serve both types of developers. And the third point and last point uh, as a deep dive is the integration. How can we make sure that the cloud workstation is integrated in an existing environment in, at Comet Spring? So um, we then built a cloud native CSD pipeline within BDAA and we made sure that we have the connectivity first to our Git, to our on-prem Git environment, because this is where the code lies. Next, we are connected to our on-prem um, repositories for the containers and libraries. And last but not least, we also have connected it to, to Cloud Build, then to further stage in the, in the CSD pipeline. And now the interesting part here is that it is not only connected to on-prem, but it is also connected to new security tools, such as Azure Open Source Software, where we can use libraries that have been checked by, by Google, um, and then which feed into our, into our um, library management system. Same goes for container scanning, which we use uh, Artifact uh, Container for, and um, make sure that, that everything flows together in cloud workstations and that the developers and analysts only have one point of contact, which is the analytics, uh, which is the customer um, endpoint in the, in the um, cloud workstation. And of course, what was announced, uh, what you might have seen to this morning is, is Druid AI for cloud workstations. And this is also something we are uh, testing right now and uh, we are looking very much forward to the, to the features coming and um, it's, it's a lot of fun working with these new tools and, and uh, a huge gain of, um, of productivity. And I also want to, to show you an example how we uh, used cloud workstations in a day-to-day -day use case. So one example is ESG, ESG or short for envir envir environmental, social, and governmental data. So we have a BDA use case, which is just called ESG. And there was one goal. The goal was to process ESG data for risk evaluation within one month. And the task brought to us, to CCOE, was A, provide use case lifecycle for the use case on GCP. Second, enable the developers as fast as possible. And third, ensure that the architecture, everything is working with cloud native. And so we started working. And after some, some, uh, uh, some days, we actually had the solution in our pockets. First, we provided a use case specific cloud workstation setup within a day. Then on the second day, we talked to the developers and said, hey, look, everything's online. You just need to click this button and you can start actually working. And so already on day two, when the project started, the developers were available and ready to use the cloud workstation, connected to on-prem, to all the um, usual CSD flows that we have, and, and started working. And due to this quick setup phase and due to the also um, cloud native architecture with, with cloud functions, with cloud storage, with PubSub and all of that, um, we made sure that actually the goal of the use case to provide this risk evaluation within one month was achieved way earlier. And um, so this is a good example, I guess, where you can see that if you use the right tools for the right problems, you can make sure that you actually achieve your goals and at the end have a lot of time also left for you know, partying or doing the next project. 
And I want to also, uh, I, have, I have gathered some quotes here I just want to share with you because remarkably for this project was that within BDAA, when we brought and introduced cloud workstations to, to our developers, we got a lot of very good feedback. So nine of out of 10 developers actually recommended cloud workstations to their next developers who then approached us. And so we had this avalanche effect of developers actually knocking on our door and saying, hey, I also want to test cloud workstations. Can I get to do the beta program? And um, in the end, this led to, to um, developers, analysts, and admins being actually very happy. So um, we have the admins who say that, hey, we have a minimized infrastructure to manage. That's great. The analysts, said, uh, it's a great responsiveness. I can use Jupyter Notebook directly on, on, on my browser. That, that's great. And the developer said, hey, um, it's a nice integration directly into Google Cloud. So if I want to run something on Google Cloud, I just hit the button and it's already there, thanks to Cloud Workstations. And now, um, to, to wrap this up, there's only like one question left. And the question is, okay, well, uh, okay, now that there's this use case in, in, in Comments Bank, in BDIA, and it worked for this use case, you have the CICD pipeline, um, but how can I set up something like this for myself? And how can I get cloud workstations for you? And um, as you see on the right-hand picture, of course, you can get a cyber center of excellence, yeah? But this is quite, um, quite uh, 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 let's say, um, reserved for Comments Bank. But the question you should ask in order to, to achieve the same that we did is first, what is your vision? What, what are you trying to achieve? And our goal was to A, enable the developers, and B, enable the data scientists. And then the next question is, how can you achieve this? So you know, know, know your, your vision, but what, what do you need for this? Do you need your executive sponsorship? Do you need uh, your on-prem CSED people? Do you need to talk to ML ops people, for example? Or who can build the solution? Who can write the Terraform for it? And after you have answered these questions, the next is about process and technology. So um, how can you embed um, the cloud workstation in your existing CICD environment? You might have a lot of other stuff running on other platforms, like on-prem or maybe uh, uh, even other completely new uh, environments. And then the question is also, are you allowed to use this new technology? You, may you need to make sure to, to talk to standard setters. You need to make sure that it's regu regulatory compliant and to make sure that you also get some benefit out of cloud workstations. So we got this mostly because it's cloud native. It's an, a managed VM. We don't want to update operating systems. Marcus can do this much better than we can do this. And if you have this, this benefit, then, then it's much easier to explain why you, you need to use cloud workstations. And last but not least, um, you also, of course, need to make sure that you, that you talk to the people because these are the ones, the developers and, and, and data scientists, these are the ones who will use the cloud workstations in the end. So um, you need to make sure that for them it's easy to get in touch, it's easy, understandable why you are having this tool, and um, in, in, in the best case, you don't need to, to you know, convince them, but you maybe you just tell them, hey, here's a here's tool, and then by word of mouth, as it happened in, in our case, in BDA, um, the developers actually approach us to get in touch with this new technology. So it's uh, the same as you hear multiple times, it's, uh, of course, processes, people, and technology, but um, the people is like here the core part in order to drive Cloud Workstation to, to success in your company. So with that being said, um, this is a um, story of Commerce Bank and BDA and Cloud Workstations. Now handing over back to Marcus. Right, thank you so much, uh, Chris. An exciting story from Commerce Bank and exciting to having part, having played a role on that uh, story. So, uh, yeah, as you folks saw, uh, Cloud Workstations essentially focuses on achieving two goals. The first one is increasing developer productivity, both on dev environment setup, day to day development, and it does so by providing optionality, essentially meeting you where they are with your tools. That's one. And she was doing so while preserving, if not enhancing, your security posture by essentially bringing all those security mechanisms you're familiar to with using on production and moving those to your development environment, such as VPC, VPCSC, private ingress and egress, or logging, all those capabilities available. That was just a sliver of what you have workstations. There's much more, but I now want to also, first of all, thank you folks for coming here. Hey.